It's Sunday, April the 24th, King of the Mountain State Show, presented by the Dutch Miller Auto Group. I'm sitting down today with bad Matt Adams, who's now 1-0 and as a professional. Matt, tell me a little bit what it feels like. It was nine months ago. I looked at the calendar. It was nine months ago. You have went from an unknown amateur with no experience to really putting on a show, and now you're winning as a professional. What's the last nine months been like, and what was it like last weekend being a pro? Well, first, Chase, I appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, to answer them question, it was awesome. Uh, I love coming down to West Virginia. I love fighting. I mean, a little drive for the family, but we like it. We like getting out of Ohio, <laughs> of course. But uh, – no, yeah, nine months ago, I was with my buddy. We were just coming back from the zoo, and he asked me, hey, man, you want to box? I said, yeah, man, you know, let's, you know, it took some talking into it because I didn't want to come down there with him and get matched up and have to fight with my friends. But, uh, yeah, nine months ago, I didn't know you. You didn't know me. I didn't box ever. <laughs> so, yeah, it was awesome. But up to this point, I loved every second. Actually, I, I like it more than May because – my strong point is my wrestling. So working on my stand-up really helps me get a feel for the game. Well, and you're heavy handed. I mean, you really get to show off. I know you're a wrestler and all that kind of stuff, but I'm watching you. Tell me what it's like when you put those 10 ounce gloves on, those things look pretty dangerous, huh? Yeah. Tell you what, uh, they felt really good on me. I didn't really go show showcase any of like my combos against CJ. I respect him. I hope nothing but the best. I wish you would retire. This sport, it's it's a mean sport. It is a mean sport. You you know, you put them 10-ounce gloves on, you get hit, you get, you know, you mess up your brain. A lot of things can happen. And CJ's one of them guys. He he's older. He has a family. And I wish he would honestly either take it more seriously or step down with all due respect towards him. Step so we'll down. So what we're talking about, last Saturday night down in Madison, West Virginia, you made your pro debut. It was C.J. Matthews' pro debut. He came out of the, uh, the the unsanctioned backyard type fighting for most of his career. He's had a lot of amateur bouts here recently, but uh, you were able to put him away uh, pretty dominant fashion early in the fight in the first round. Uh, he may not be the only one that gets that kind of treatment, but uh, you could tell when you landed that one right hand, that was pretty much it. And I think he decided it was time to pack the bags and drive home. Yeah. Uh, putting them 10-ounce gloves on, definitely different than 16. But when I felt – I came out a little aggressively, which is was my bad. I, I don't know. Everyone says in the crowd, like, I, I love how you fight. So I feel like going out there, I got to put on – I got to go forward. I got to hit someone. I got to throw punches. But with pro, you know, them rounds are longer. You know, so I need to calm down. But we came out there. He tied. I wasn't used to someone tying up me. He tried to tie up me. I'm like, all oh, right. And then I'm like, you know, you're going to tie up me. And I kind of threw him down, which was stupid. You know, I need to tone it back. But, yeah, well, I felt that right hand, that 10-ounce glove hit. I hit him about, hit him about 60%. And I just felt his jaw. And I'm like, I knew I knew it was over right then there. I felt it. And all right, it's over. So, so these so these fights early in your pro career are somewhat dressed rehearsal, somewhat. I mean, that fight was to get you used to the to what if you did have to go three minute rounds, if you did have to play defense against ten ounce gloves, stuff like that. Um, it's a process that we're we're building. We're trying to create something. Now, I could quote a guy who said something about you, and that quote would be. Uh, if he ever learns to box, he's going to be dangerous. And the person who said it was you. You know that. You're in position where you've got all the physical tools, but learning to keep calm, learning to box, throw combinations, control the ring, pace yourself a little bit more. That's what we have to work on. So, so talk to me about that. What are things we're going to do getting ready for the next fight that you want to try to put in place to help you do that? Uh, I'm going to get a hold of a couple box coaches we talked about, you know, Gary Wolf, excellent box coach. He lives right there. He's out, I'm pretty sure. Joe Board, I, I, I got to get some work done with him. Legend in the sport. Uh, nothing but respect when we talk. Uh, then Chad Van Sickle. I want to give a Chad, get a couple. They got great guys up there. Travis Davis, you know, he's undefeated. Boxer, great guy. Me and him are really cool. But I also want to I want to get some work in with a couple of the VO2 guys. Uh, I love Big James. You know, I want to see him honestly win this tournament. Uh, you know, they got a lot of good guys. I want to for them. They show up and they show up to fight. You know, I got nothing but respect for the fighters out of that gym. 
you know, last Saturday you shared the card with a bunch of good fighters. Like when it was round one of that tournament, we looked around pre-fight meeting and I'm looking at some of the talent with my kids and they're like, there's that guy, there's this guy. And I'm like, you know, there's a bunch, there's 15 fights at night, 30 fighters plus Flannery, his guy backed out. So that's 31 guys that was there, not just there, but you got the Derek Lambert's in the building, the Jordan Moore's uh, people like that, that there was just a lot of talent in boxing there. And I'm starting to see it come back alive again, where it's not just show up and brawl, whatever the, the boxers are there. What's it like when you you're the 13th fight out of 15 and you're watching these fights, there's a lot of good fights at night. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, there was a couple of fights that stuck out to me that I'm like, you know what, this guy can be good. He can be dangerous and we can be potential opponents in the you know near future. Uh, you know, you got Gabe Lambert great amazing guy i love him to death not you know not to be respect that's a be down to do uh you got um what rob prez one eyed wolf you know you know he talks a lot on facebook he does but he shows up you know a lot of guys will discredit him because how much he talks that's a you know that's a fight that i look forward in the future i told him down the fight to get through his tournament let's run it there's a lot you know a lot of good fights uh you know vo2 jess she showed out that was a I I felt like that was fight of the night, you know. I you know I don't discredit anyone. That was fight of the night. Then you had uh James, you know, he just then big big man. He moves forward, and I'll tell you what, his opponent came to fight too for a debut. Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely. I was as impressed with Tyler Rubel as I was anybody. The man had never fought before. He fights James Dodd. He fights him tough. He really probably won the first round maybe, but then the second, third, James went to work. But uh, there's a lot of guys with a lot of talent. We're starting to see that again. There's going to be, like you said, there's some really big fights coming up in the next year or two from, from this thing. Um, what about who's – we know that you're going to fight now June 18th. Um, we don't know who the opponent is yet. You're not taking any time off. You've got the gas pedal down to the floor. I know you love the fight. You'd fight tomorrow night if I asked you to against whoever I wanted you to fight. But uh, talk to me about that. You know a lot of these pros, man, they're chasing fights. They're chasing cards, trying to get fights. And uh, you got a place. Like, you fight every six, seven, eight weeks, and you can stay consistent. What's it like? Are you getting right back in camp right now? Have you been to the gym yet? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I stepped in my cardio. I'm down for my last fight. I mean, it's not always great losing weight, being a heavyweight, but I feel like I fight my best at 250. I really do. I weighed in the last fight a little heavy. Uh, I came in. I thought to myself, if I weighed in heavy, you know, I knew CJ was a big dude. If I weighed in heavy, my punches would be stronger. That's not the case. Your punches, you know, come from your hips and come from, you know, you doing it over and over again, learning the technique. So right now, yes, I stepped in my cardio. Uh, I've been hitting the heavy bag. I've been, you know, getting on, tripping on the stairs. Uh, I'm about to give with some coaches, hopefully go up to Chad's a couple times next week. And hopefully on the week, we get with Joe Board, Gary. Gary's a little bit closer drive. They have amazing fires down there, you know, like Derek Gibson, all them guys. So, yeah, I'm right back to you. Like I told you, I was hoping I'd fight the 30th this month. You talked to me about that. I'll fight every week, man. Uh, I'm not, I'll never step away from a fight. Put me in, and I'll be there. Well, and that's something that we're definitely some options we're looking at is you're not always going to be on our card. You know, we're going to create some opportunities for you to be able to jump on some other cards and try to get that that record straight. You know, uh, tell me about the support. I'm sure after your fight, there was a bunch of people reach out to you and say, hey, man, congratulations on this first win as a pro and stuff. I'm sure you've seen that uh, that friends list and that inbox grow over the past nine months. What was it like now doing it as a pro? I'm sure a lot of people reach out to you. Uh, I had a lot of people, you know, I didn't expect to reach out to me. A lot of people that I would say rip me off in the past, which was I'm one of the people I don't hold grudges. If you rip me off because, you know, when I first came into the game of fighting, I lost an MMA match. I should have won. And from there, there on, I had people hating on me. They're like, this kid can't fight. All that wrestling for nothing. So now moving to boxing, I feel like I proved myself enough to this point. You know, I had I lost one boxing match so far. Gary Rollins strong dude uh which in my heart i feel like could win anyway that night but you know i had a lot of people a lot of good support i got a lot of sponsors that stepped behind me from my hometown in new lex you know shout out to new lex so yeah i'm man i'm here to inspire people you know it's cool to make a little bit of money off these fights it's cool to fight but if i can't inspire if i don't inspire one person every time i step in that ring there's no point in me doing it. you know i got a daughter a wife uh even your kids love watching me. If I gave them knuckles before I fought, right before I fought, I leaned over the ring and gave them knuckles. 
So if I inspire one person each time I fight, I'm going to keep fighting no matter how old I get, you know? So it's an exciting style of fighting. Like we know we have to pull it back a little bit. Like we're, I never have to push you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's not a problem. Pulling you back as we go into four and six and eight round fights. Like we're going to have to pace ourselves, but you've won over the fans. A lot of people love watching you. I love watching you. Um, so I think it's going to, you're, I told you this before, you're a better pro than you were as an amateur because it's more of a fight. Anything can happen. It can take one punch and do that, especially with your power. You got a bright future. Last thing I got for you before you go, and I know you're not prepared for this, so I want to see what you say. Give me a dream matchup. One year from now, one year and a half from now, you've got this big record. Maybe some other guys do too. You've had success. What's the mega fight some point down the line? You got a name that we can circle, or, or, or is that something we got to wait on? Well, man, I'll tell you what, and it's not even a huge matchup. But it is a huge matchup, but it's not, and I don't want to even say it, but uh, it'll, it'll probably never happen. I would love to run it back with a few dudes in my life. I want I want that Gary fight. Uh, I know you're talking about maybe sign him, but in a year or two, you know, there might be bigger fights than that, but me and Gary have so much respect for each other. And I feel like that was one of the best amateur heavyweight fights down there. I feel like if we did it again by the time my name grows. And, you know, there's – we left so much in the ring that night. Neither of us came 100%. We left so much there. I feel like if we pick back up pros, he gets six months of training. I get six months of training, you know, for like a good camp, maybe not six months or six weeks, whatever. I want to throw bombs with him again. I want to go out there. I want to bleed again from him. I want to get hit by him again. You know, I love working for you. I love watching you. I love Gary rolling the same way. I will always say it to this point. That's the best amateur boxing match I've ever seen in my life in person. It was totally awesome. Uh, a couple things go different in that it could be, uh, we could be sitting here a whole different outcome, but uh, it's as good as it could get. And you're right. Like uh, the state of West Virginia, we've not had a 15 and 0 heavyweight and a 14 and 0 heavyweight go at it. You know, like that's a that's uncharted waters that the professional part of our state's not been at. And you guys have the talent and stuff, whether it happens or not. And you know me, I hope it don't happen. I hope it does. Ha like, I, I'm I in the, I'm in the position where I'm like, hey, uh, this is if this was baseball, you guys would bat three, four in the lineup. But this ain't baseball. So oh, somebody. But uh, that's awesome, man. Hey, get in there. Get that coaching thing lined out. You know, we talk about this a lot. You know how I know how important this is for you to get the coaching. You got all the tools, man. You just got to get with that good coaching and really become a boxer. And if you do, you can do anything you want to do. So I'm excited to watch you. You got anything for me before we go? Well, I want to uh, say thank you for to you for putting me on your cards. I want to give a shout out to your kids. They work 10 times harder than you work down there. Uh, Somebody's got to. Let me tell you that. I want to give just a few shout out to a couple of my sponsors. You know, uh, I haven't been giving them a lot of shout outs in interviews, but uh, I want to give a shout out to Steve and Sue Anderson uh, out of New Lex, Brian Hireman out of New Lex, uh, Brian Fisher out of New Lex. And I want to give a big shout out to uh, my buddy, Kevin Roop. His uh, company sponsored me. And a big shout out to my buddy, Unified, Tyson Collins. He uh, owns a clothing line. Unified, they do sportswear. I want to big shout out to them. And one more is my buddy Clinton Campbell. I want to give a big shout out to he owns a clothing line too, Chase and Tail Hunting Apparel. So I just want to give a big shout out to all them guys and uh, hopefully grow in the future. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. Keep doing it. Get with the coach. Let's do this thing. You're back in the ring. June the 18th. Yeah, June the 18th. Um, should be a pretty exciting night. We got a big card. We're getting ready to release. Matt, thanks again for sitting down with me, man. I can't wait to see the next one. Thanks, Chase. You have a great day, buddy. You too.